welcome back. Today I'm gonna show you how I get my go-to makeup look using some new products and some of my favorites as well. started this video is sponsored by Sephora. If you're not already signed up for the Beauty Insider program, I'll leave a link below in the description box. That way you can sign up and then get access to discounts and promotions and get early access to the Sephora savings events. All right, so for most video shoot days, I have a makeup artist that comes. You guys have seen her. Her name is Nikki LaRose and she comes on days when we're gonna shoot a bunch of videos. We're just gonna like knock out at least like four or five videos and it just makes it really easy to get ready in the morning and then just really focus on shooting a ton of videos. But then there come times where I need to just knock out a video. Usually it's when I'm doing some type of a Zoom video with an expert, like a dermatologist. Then I have to do my own makeup. Boohoo, I know. There are other times where I have to do my makeup, like if I'm gonna go to a meeting or I'm going out to dinner, maybe it's date night. Mind you, that's happened like once in the last six months, so I don't do it as often as I used to. But this is kind of like my go-to makeup look. This is how I tend to look. If you were to ever see me out in person, this is probably how you would see me, either like this or really, really natural looking where I just have some tinted foundation, some blush, some mascara brows and I'm good. And I wanted to show you guys how I do this. It changes up often, usually just with the products is what changes it, but for the most part, the technique stays the same and the types of products that I use stays the same as well. So the first step is, is always skin prep. It's just as important as the actual makeup, so I take it really seriously. After I apply all of my serums and stuff, the most important skincare product I think you can put on for your makeup, not necessarily for your skin, that should be sunscreen, but the most important product you can put on for your actual makeup, that is, as far as the skincare goes, is your moisturizer. I have been using this one from Tata Harper. This is the Hydratant Profound Water Lock Moisturizer. And it has a really beautiful floral scent. I know that's gonna trigger some people, but I love the scent of it. It's really light and pretty and refreshing. And it's just really moisturizing. That's, that's really the point is you wanna find really nice, rich cream in my opinion. I have drier skin though. I have like normal to dry skin. I always want a really rich cream because it's going to almost act as my primer for me because I want something that's gonna not just be occlusive, but I also want my makeup to have something to adhere to. And I find that a really rich moisturizer like this one works really well. If it gets really cold, like in the winter time, I'll go even thicker than this, something that's really just rich and buttery and creamy. This one is kind of in the middle for me. Next, I always use an eye cream under my makeup. I don't use eye cream on a regular basis, but if I'm gonna wear makeup, especially concealer or foundation, I always put on an eye cream. I love this one during the day from Ula Henriksen. It is their Banana Bright Eye Cream. And the reason why I like it is because it's really moisturizing. It has vitamin C in it, but it also has this luminizing effect to it. And that's what I really like because there are two things that I'm trying to accomplish with eye cream in the morning, and that is I want it to have some type of a luminizing effect, but I also don't want my concealer to settle into my fine lines because then it's pointless to almost wear concealer in my opinion. I hate when my concealer is just settling into just everything that you can see on my face, so I feel like moisturizer is really important. So I use a really rich moisturizer and then I go in with an eye cream because of that. Next, sunscreen. You know that you need to wear the sunscreen during the day. If you're gonna go out and it's date night and you are not gonna be in the sun anymore because it's nighttime, then obviously you can skip the sunscreen. But during the day, I like this one from Biosance. It's also very moisturizing for me. You know, something to keep in mind is that if you're gonna be wearing a lot of makeup, then you want to make sure that your moisturizer and your sunscreen dry down between application because otherwise you're gonna get a little bit of pilling from your makeup products or even your sunscreen and your moisturizer could pill. It could even you know, dilute your sunscreen. You just wanna make sure that you have a little bit of a dry down. So you apply your moisturizer, let that dry down a little bit, and then you apply your sunscreen. This sunscreen is an SPF 30. It's got UVA, UVB protection. It's really moisturizing, which is something that I really like underneath makeup because it just glides on smoother. I don't love sunscreens that have too much of a of like a powdery feel to them. Instead, I want something that's gonna feel more like a lotion to me because again, this is how I'm prepping my skin underneath makeup. The one thing I will say though is that because it is a mineral sunscreen, it does leave just a touch of a white cast. It's not bad. They did a really good job with this one. I think most skin tones will really appreciate it. I like to wear underneath makeup, so it doesn't really matter to me anyway. It doesn't mess with the actual actual makeup that I'm using, and I let this dry down too. So I apply it all over anywhere that I have skin exposed, and then I let it dry down. So I will, you know, take a break, maybe I'll go brush my teeth, whatever it is that you need to do, you let your sunscreen dry down before you move on to your makeup. 
So when it comes to the next step, I am a big fan of tinted moisturizers, not really because of the SPF. I don't even really take into account the SPF number. If anything, it's like, oh, it's just like added protection in the areas that, are, that I apply it. What I want is usually more of like a dewy, natural finish to my skin. So I tend to use tinted moisturizers a lot. The ones that I tend to use are this one. You guys have heard me talk about it. I have tubes of this stuff because I love it so much. This is a Shiseido Wasso Color Smart Day Moisturizer. This specifically is the oil-free one. They have another one that's like a sorbet kind of color, like a sherbet orangey kind of color, and that one is more moisturizing. I like the oil-free version because it has ingredients that make it a little bit more like a primer, like it has more of a priming effect to it. So I don't look too dewy if I apply way too much skin prep. If I have like way too rich of a moisturizer, way too rich of a sunscreen, then this one really lays well. And I like the effect that it has on my skin. So it feels like I, I'm like hydrated and moisturized throughout the day, but I don't look too shiny in the areas where I don't wanna be shiny. So this one works out really well. And it just gives a very natural look. I've also been liking this one from YSL. This is the all-in-one Glow. I like this one because it feels nice and light, but it gives it a little bit more coverage than the Wasso one does, but it still looks really, really natural and dewy. These are super natural. This is like my five minute face, which is what I do most of the time. These are, these are what I reach for right now. Today, I decided to use this one from Bite Beauty. It is their Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. I don't really fully understand the micellar technology in this, but I'll tell you, this is just really pretty. I you know, got it, I started trying it out, and it just feels really dewy and smooth and hydrating, but it also has really nice medium coverage to it. It's not a full coverage foundation. It just gives you that nice in-between look. So for days when I wanna look a little bit more made up, this one is a really nice one. If you have oily skin, you might hate this, but I find that the finish is really nice and it starts off really dewy, but it dries down nicely. So I think that most skin types would actually really appreciate this. Either way, if you're shopping at Sephora, you have different options when it comes to foundation and tinted moisturizers, whatever it is, if you want something that's a little bit more full coverage or, you know, matte foundations are a little bit more in lately. Next, this has become my new favorite makeup tool. This is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Palette Intensity One. It was my makeup artist, Nikki, who turned me on to this and I love the way it makes my skin look because usually when I'm contouring, I'm not really trying to like carve out my face. That's not the kind of look I usually go for. Instead, I'm trying to warm up my skin because I also have now like covered it in foundation and stuff. So I wanna just warm it up, make sure that my features stand out and everything, especially my cheekbone area. So I'll take kind of a dense brush and I'll stipple it on. You know, I'll just tap it in and then I'll tap it into my skin. I'll take the bronzer, I'll put it, you know, in like the typical areas, but then I also use it on my eyelids just to kind of carve out my eyes. And then also on like my jawline. That's what I, that's where I really like to have a little bit more bronzing. And I'll even put it on my chest and like collarbone area. And I love the finish it has. It just goes on really, really nicely. Another reason why I love this bronzer is because I deal with melasma on my skin. If, if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a form of hyperpigmentation, but it's something that I can't really help too much because it's, you know, caused from like hormones. I got it mostly because of my two pregnant but it kind of looks like this, this like splotchiness on my skin. And whenever I use this type of a creamy bronzer, what it does is it almost masks it. Like it looks like it blends together and it camouflages it. So I like to use a cream bronzer for that reason is because it almost makes my melasma work for me as if it's like makeup. Next I go in and I fill in my eyebrows. This is a Brow Wiz by Anastasia. Beverly Hills, it's old school. It's one of like my go-tos, it's a classic. I love it because it has the spoolie on one end and then it also has just a really thin pencil brush. Really, it's like the reason why I like this one is because it has everything I need and I like to have that thin pencil brush because it helps me not go overboard and go too dark with my brows. So then I'll take an eyeshadow palette. I am a big fan of eyeshadow palettes. I like them to be basic but not, which is why I like this one. This is by Makeup by Mario. This is the Master mattes palette. What I like about palettes like this is that I can just use one palette for my entire makeup look. So I like to go for more of the neutral type of palettes. He definitely has other palettes that are metallic and bright and bold. But I like to use this type of a palette because this is gonna be my entire eyeshadow look and eyeliner look. I'll start with like a really light brownish tone and I'll go in with a fluffy brush 
into my crease area just to really make that stand out. And then after that, it's all about the eyeliner look. So I take an angled brush and then I use my setting spray. This one is by Hourglass. It's the soft focus setting spray. Nikki uses this on me on days where we're actually shooting all day on video. But I like to use something like this on an angled brush to wet it and then dip it into my eyeshadow to make it an eyeliner. It's better than using like a spray toner or even water because it's not super, super wet and it's gonna help it stay a little bit longer too because of the ingredients in it. So what I'll do is I'll just spray just a little bit onto the tip of the angle brush and the way that this nozzle is, it's very precise so you don't get just like mist all over the place either. It goes right onto the angle brush. And then I'll pick whichever color I wanna use as my eyeliner and I will dip it in and then I'll start to create the wing to my eyeliner look. When it comes to winged eyeliner, I always go for some type of a brownish tone or something that's just not black. Black eyeliner at this point just looks too bold on me and it doesn't look good in my opinion. And I want something that's just gonna look a little bit softer. So I go for different shades of brown, which is another reason why I love having a palette like this. After that, I'll take a small eyeshadow brush and instead of doing eyeliner on the bottom of my eyes, something that Nikki has really driven home to me is that I shouldn't be using eyeliner under there anymore because it just doesn't look right. It's too, it's too stark, it doesn't look good. I, again, use the palette, which is why, again, I love palettes that are really versatile like that and that have a lot of different neutrals in it. I take a small eyeshadow brush and I just put a little bit underneath my eyes, kind of like in the, in the eyeliner area. I then go in with my concealer. This one is by Laura Mercier. I also love the classic one from NARS, but I go in and I just tap a little bit onto my under eye area and I take my beauty blender and I just make sure I blend everything out. I fix all of my eyeshadow and my eyeliner and everything and just make sure that my entire look just kind of looks lifted and that's really how I get my eyeshadow look is I really just focus on that concealer so it's not using too much it's just using a little bit of concealer to get in there and set everything fix all of my mistakes it's like a lazy way to do makeup but I love knowing that I have my concealer my beauty blender to just fix everything after that, I go in, I use a little bit more powder just to make sure everything is set under my eyes, make sure I'm not shiny in areas that I don't wanna be shiny. I n almost never get my cheek area or I get like, I never even get like the sides of my forehead. It's really just that one section right down the middle of my face that I'm focused on and my under eye area so that my makeup doesn't crease too much. After that, I use some type of a cream blush usually. I'm using this one right now by Rare Beauty. The color is Bliss. I'm not sure sure if I love this too much. It sets a little bit too much for me. I like something that looks a little bit more dewy, especially if I'm not gonna use any kind of a luminizer, but I do love the color of this blush. It's very pretty and fresh looking, but I tend to use something more creamy, like the Multi Stick by Ilia Beauty is one of my favorites. I love that one so much, but I wanted to switch it up, wanted to try some Rare Beauty, and I love this color called Bliss. And then I'll curl my lashes and put on mascara. Mascara is super important to me because it just finishes off the whole look. This is my favorite mascara probably ever. It's by Ilya Beauty. It's all about the brush. I love the formulation too, but the brush is perfection to me. So I love this mascara. I don't really have much to say about the formula. It's all about the brush. It really is. And then I set my brows. I'm not that picky about what I set my brows with, but I do like something that doesn't make my brows look too dark because I'm just heavy handed when it comes to my makeup and skincare and everything. So something like this by Urban Decay, this is the brow finish. It's just a clear gel and it just helps get my brows where I want them to be. All right, so then I apply lipstick. I always have some type of lip color on, but I'm one of those people that likes a lipstick that feels more like a lip balm. So this one from YSL is one of my go-tos. I love the texture of it. I know that they can be a little bit pricey, but they also make me very nostalgic for my mid-20s because I used to buy this lipstick all the time in my mid-20s and it would make me feel really fancy. And it turns out it still makes me feel fancy. And I think it's because it was like the most expensive makeup product I owned back then. It's pretty. It smells nice. That's the part that makes me nostalgic is that it has this very specific scent. They call it a mango scent. And it's just, it's really light and pretty. Everything feels like you're wearing a lip balm. It's very hydrating, it's very moisturizing, and all of the colors are very shiny and pretty. 
So that is my go-to makeup look. It's not my quick five minute makeup look, which is really what I tend to do on most days. This is that look where I wanna step it up just a little bit. I might have to be on camera, I might have to go to a meeting, I might get another date night one of these days <laughs> with my husband. This is what I end up doing. If you guys are not signed up for the Sephora Beauty Insider Program, I will leave a link below in the description box so you can sign up for it. I really encourage you to because you'll feel like you're missing out whenever all the savings events come. If you have any questions, you can ask below in the comments and you can find me on Instagram. I'm at Susan Yara and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.